All right, guys, welcome to uh, Brewing with Birch and Bromley, episode four. Um, we're going to talk about how hard UFS is, the hardest game in the entire world to play. Um, and I mean this mostly mostly joking. Um, it's more of a satirical thing, in my opinion. I think the game's hard, don't get me wrong. Very hard game to play, but um, I really just want to get into, I guess, the uh, the nitty-gritty of why I think people's mentality is... Generally, oh, fairly shit. bad. It's very fucking bad, dude. And like, I I think we could go over like maybe some things, of, some reasons of why it is specifically actually hard. But realistically, I just want to go into like such this dog shit mentality that people have while playing this game about like what is and is not actually happening in their games. Um, and I I won't particularly point out names or anything in this because that would be like a witch hunt of bad players. Yeah, we'll we'll talk shit about Bromley and all that, but and maybe the boys. Maybe I'd start pointing fingers at the boys, but I won't go outside the circle, friends, to uh like really, really drag people down. Cause I think I could and I don't want to do that. Um but I guess like my my big first first point on on this on this topic is um people whose immediate response to um their decks not functioning against uh like certain cards is to immediately like respond with these cards are broken or these cards need to be changed or this this and that um instead of going okay hey i have a strategy that is very specific that requires this certain interaction to work they don't protect that strategy instead their solution is to complain to everybody that their really niche combo doesn't work I'm oh. sure you've like witnessed that before. That sounds like exactly like me. What? You're just quoting me. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm shots fired right out the gate at Bromley. <laughs> but it's not even like it's not even let me say it's it's not even like a, a specific situation where you're playing a combo deck. It's just like say my character is like I'm Ken two dot, right? Yeah. And I wanna pump speed and damage. And my yeah. opponent has overly dramatic. Or there's and I'm like man. Or they're still, man. And I'm just like, fuck. These cards are so stupid. Why'd they get printed? Why can my opponent have these cards? Blah, 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 blah. Instead of actually trying to go, okay, well, I still like my deck. Mm -hmm. So why don't I find solutions to these cards? Or right. like look at look at it from that perspective. A lot of times people will, will also just like run uh, face first into that wall too. Like playing into Gil, a lot of people will just like attack him turn two. Uh, and like try to poke him down and that just never works against Gil. You got a one shot in ass, right? So you just you just fucking build, right? You build and you build until the point where he can't deal with your shit because he was on usually symbols that had shit deadlock outside of uh, shotgun, right? Um, and like in your can example playing against Stoneman, you don't have to enhance. You can just send printed stats at him and kill him that way like that's that's a thing you can do um so so people don't adapt particularly well they want like it's almost like they want the thing to work so blisteringly bad against them so that they can complain about it right it it feels it feels like they 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 like they know these cards exist right like yeah. overly dramatic's not a new card no but people don't want to like play around it they want mm -hmm. to just be able to throw their face at it and it just magically disappears or their opponent is too stupid to use it. And then when your opponent is too, like has a brain and is like, well, I'm not going to just negate whatever the hell you want me to negate. I'm going to negate the important stuff. I'm going to negate what's going to lose me the game. They like lose their minds. Yeah. It, 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 it's like everybody expects all of their cards to just autopilot, like ram themselves into each other and like it's an auto battler and hope people like hope they come out victorious because they came up with like some super like greedy means of playing their deck that didn't include answers to these cards. Mm. Like I'm not saying there's perfect answers in these things, but say you're like, we'll go back to the Ken example. Ken has fire. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're really, really worried about running into some of these answers, like overly dramatic, you could play cards like servant of Aries. Sure. Your deck slows down a little bit, but you are capable of finding like within the format answers to these cards without just immediately jumping onto social media, like discord, stuff like that. 
and really just complaining your your head off about like how you perceive this game to be so remarkably bad because yeah. your super niche deck won't work. I, I have two examples for you. Um, like right when Noob was previewed, everybody was all aboard the brand new new train or like new broken train because it changed it to unblockables and stuff like that. And so like Jose and I were testing and I was just like, oh, here, take the Raptor list that we've been testing and you've been doing, doing so well and just shove four deliverances in the sideboard. Um, and, and it worked. Like anytime I played him with my spike deck or the Janet list or something like that, he would just, because those decks tend to build to a, a point where you can sculpt, yeah. And normally it doesn't matter, right? Because they're unblockable attacks, but Deliverance just gets around that, right? Even if the spike had like a fueling up or something like that, he would just, oh, I had two of them because I sideboarded four Deliverances into my deck, right? And then uh, uh, as another one, like uh, nobody wanted to play Cowboy Andy when he came out because he was clearly, he's clearly super strong, right? He's yeah. extremely good, right? Um, and so I was like, I'm going to play this Cowboy Andy deck. Um, and, and, you know, people were joking, oh, I'll put TK Mastery in all my decks. I'll put, uh, I'll play Stone Man, et cetera, because those are good into him. He's giving everything plus one, plus one. Stone Man just gives him minus three damage in time he uses his response. Yeah. So I was like, well, how do I address that people are all going to be, like, gunning for this Cowboy Andy thing? And so I put Kuwabara and a bunch of Kuwabara attacks into the sideboard. And I spent half that tournament tournament as Kuwabara because I was playing into TK Mastery and, Kuh- and uh, Stone Man decks. Um, so, like, I could have sat and, like, built my Cowboy Andy deck to just be, like, a face roll sort of thing uh, and then complain about how annoying Stone Man is to play into. Uh, or I could have thought about, like, oh, what dumpsters my deck? What has the interaction for this response speed plus one plus one that I'm trying to do 40 times in enhanced step? This, this, and this. Um, and so, so some people will will sit and they'll they'll greedily point or, or play that thing, and they're like, and when they hit something that interacts with them, suddenly it's like, but why? How come he oh, gets absolutely. to? How come he gets to touch my thing? Right? Like, 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 um, Tagura Brothers playing into Meteor, two really nuts cards, right? Uh, people complain about Meteor because it has too many uh, uh, parts in it. And they just forget to read the part where it cancels an action, and they'll be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a lot going. Like, I don't know. I, I find people to, like, it's it's not that I'm saying you can't play a greedy deck. I play greedy decks. I love greedy decks. If yeah. I build an aggro deck, there aren't defensive cards in it. Yeah. That's fine, because I know that it's a race. It's a mm-hmm. race for me to beat them or them to get their pieces to beat me. And I have no issue with that whatsoever. But it's 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 the people who are trying to build these super greedy decks, but then they also don't understand that like your super greedy deck does have answers to it. Yeah. Um, my super greedy decks all have answers to them as well, and it's you either have to accept that the answers are going to happen, you're going to have to play around them, play through them, play into them, or you have to build and like sculpt like a side deck or something like that, or your main deck has to include answers to some of these cards, um, like. It, it's 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 not as black and white as like these cards are broken these cards shouldn't be printed and stuff like that in these regards because like decks that are super greedy need answers to them so they're not overpowering yeah. like if your deck is bad and it's just straight up bad you shouldn't be complaining about this like your talum 2 deck that sucks it just sucks dude i'm sorry that's just the way it is not all cards in any card game are created equally and I understand that you probably are a big fan of Talon, right? I'm a big fan of Tira. I think Tira 1 and 2 are both pretty fucking bad. I like. I think Ibuki is really bad. I play Ibuki. I love Ibuki. That's my favorite Street Fighter character. I don't play them in the aspect that I think I'm going to be able to win a championship or anything with them because they aren't... That's not the type of decks they are. Right. There are always, in every single game, going to be the meta, and then there's going to be everything else. Right. Like, fair stuff. There, there's the fair stuff and then there's the stuff that is it's not broken it's just good it's the mm. good stuff and the bad stuff like we've had formats in ufs where there are clearly outlier broken cards and they always get addressed eventually right mm. i would not argue there are any of those in the format right now people think that meteor is too strong people think that to girls are too strong people think shotguns too strong mm. i don't think any of those cards are bannable i think they all do exactly what those symbols need them to do 
because without the like you we we take the vo- example of void right now void doesn't do anything now. we banned downward spiral void is the worst symbol void is sitting down there hanging out having a couple brews with like air and like chaos just doing fucking nothing they're doing hey, nothing they're unplayable. I just took a void deck and did pretty okay with it this weekly. <laughs> that's okay, but here's the thing: that's that's a a character driven deck more so yeah. than a symbol driven deck. And I yeah. agree that Akuma is the only playable void deck. It's absolutely the only playable void deck, and it's actually really good the way you're playing it because uh, Void's gauge attacks are actually really good. Yeah, but Void can't kill people anymore, so like. Yeah, Akuma, Akuma have bridges that killing. gap. Yeah, he does. He doesn't have any problems killing people. Akuma bridges that gap where, like, DJ can't play. In my opinion, you can't play a void DJ deck. I've tried to build several. You've, I mean, I've tested them against you, yeah. and they're just kind of like lacking substance. Yeah. They don't yeah. have the the same like end game solutions to the to the to, to anything. So, like, well, y- it's it's an example where like a good character can still get pushed out of the meta. But like your mm-hmm. bad characters are not gonna like be able to bridge that gap. Typically, they're not gonna I, just jump into the meta. I, I think that I think that um, the the whole the meta as a whole kind of has to be uh, accounted for, right? Because like um, at the moment, right, things that are sort of I'll, I'll call them cheater cards, right? Like greedy greedy cheater cards are yeah. or big dunks are really really popular, right? Like there's the the flame war package decks, um, the the order symbol good shit, good symbol good shit, earth symbol good shit, um, that are just like straight value that can also dunk whenever they need to, right? Right. Um, uh, 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 and a package with like really great block mods and zones and breaker and things like that. So string decks in general, like low damage string, like I think Liu Kang. I don't know if he would be good right now. I don't think he would do enough damage. Seriously. I guess that's fair. I uh, think without cards like uh, Nero specifically. Yeah. And it, he, like, back at that time, strings were sort of the standard, and things like Cassie Cage were the outlier, where they were, you know, she was, she had it, she could string you, but she could also just dunk. Um, and right now, I think it's the opposite, where you're kind of playing one or two attacks. Um, and I mean, maybe you're looping like with Sangmina or with Kali Yugas and you know her her asset or whatever. Uh, but that's not really a string. That's a that's a combo deck. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, they just build to a, a point where 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 they they can dunk your face off. Um, and so Void doesn't have anything that interacts with that level. Downward Spiral was the card that just dunked. Um, but it didn't have it doesn't have that anymore. Um, so your character has to do a lot of the wamboing for you. Uh, I think I, uh, uh, water has a similar problem. Chaos as well doesn't really have a singular identity. It's more centered around the character. Um, whereas things like the, the symbols that I mentioned, right? Good, uh, fire, uh, 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 earth, and things like uh, evil and, and death all have packages that you can kind yeah. of put in any character they've got like the the attack package where it just kind of it fits in a it fits its own little identity regardless of the character because it's still yeah. always a successfully like a good successful string like earth lows with like mm-hmm. nutcracker and missile launcher and uh swallow your soul have mm-hmm. been in so many decks and then you get cards like obviously the flame roars the explode the exploding flame roar combos where it's mm-hmm. just like play some weapons play exploding flame roar at the end mm-hmm. uh shotgun in my opinion is a little bit more unique in uh, that aspect where you can kind of build your attack string around your character symbols and then yeah, you can shotgun at the end. But I, I guess to, to just kind of bring it back home, like there's, yeah. you, you're not going to get anything out of this from like a, uh, like, like a Talon two deck or like a, like I know there was a Cami deck you played against. I'm sure it had some cool things going for it, but like Cami is still one of those characters where it's like, you, you, you have to be able to bridge that gap of competing with all these characters that can build like insane attack strings and be a consistent character all together. Um, and that was just for lack of a better example. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, no one's playing E Honda. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it, 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 it's because he's not good. Like you can love E Honda, but you can't complain that these cards are beating your E Honda deck. The cards aren't beating your E Honda deck. E Honda is beating his E Honda deck because he's not yeah. good. You know, it's like, 
I understand you want to play your favorite things. And listen, uh, in Michigan, that was a big thing for pretty much all of the game's existence. All of the people, like I was an outlier, not playing my favorite character and taking them to events and trying to top cut and win with my favorite character. I was a big outlier in that aspect. Right. Everybody else is a big fanboy type player where they play their favorite characters and they did really well with them. So like, there's no, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you're willing to work and put in the hours and like the time and all the practice to make your E Honda deck a very good deck, you can do that, but you have to accept that. That doesn't necessarily have to, to do with these broke like these cards you're perceiving as broken shutting down your strategy it's that you have to work extra hard to get your niche strategy to overcome the good cards like yeah that was like i guess that's my big point on on people who just want to complain about things being broken Mm -hmm. uh or not necessarily being broken like things that counter their strategy being broken yeah. I have a whole nother argument for people who just think cards are broken and that's why they win games or like why their matchups weren't fair or close because they perceive cards to be broken. That's an entire different argument that I would like to get into after this, assuming you had n- no other points on the, the, the previous mention of like bad, bad deck can't overcome good cards. Uh, my only input is that like, um, like to add to your point, like a lot of people will have their pet decks that they put really, really like tons of time into. Like Takeda has been my pet, pet deck for a really, really long time. Yeah. Um, and he, he's, he's really good now because he's got a great package, right? The flameware package that works. Um, but I wasn't taking that to events before, right? Like that was my pet deck. I was having fun with it. I knew that it wasn't, it could not beat a hand cannon deck and hand cannon decks were really popular at the time. Yeah. And I wasn't complaining about hand cannon. like. Like in it, oh, it's broken. So it's just like, oh, that's annoying. And I know my deck can't beat it. So I'm not going to play this, right? I'm not going to play this at a, at, a, at, a, at a large event because I know I'll lose to it. Um, uh, uh, and, and so a lot of people will, will like, if they want to do that thing and they want to play their thing, they have to accept that they have losing matchups like that um, or, or, or try to prepare for it, right? You know, I know like Kobe Cram in his tacky deck plays four of the card that flips Dark Cheerito, right? Yeah. Because he knows that his deck loses to, to Dark Cheerito. I mean, and, that, and that's a perfect example of like something that makes a lot of sense to do, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. He, he knows that it washes his matchup if he doesn't flip that card. So he plays four of it, right? That's a guy who's not like, oh, Shredo really ruins my experience as a Taki player. He's like, no, I'm going to flip it and then keep playing all these six difficulty attacks and rolling sixes and tilting Chris Bromley off the face of the planet. Yeah, he's good at that, dude. <laughs> I've never um, had, I never had that experience. I got the role hotter than he did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think, I think that people don't like it, it. There's this fine line between putting too much interaction into your deck and too much thinking, which is usually where I lie. And then just like kind of accepting that you're going to have dog shit matchups sometimes. Like the way you're describing aggro decks. Anytime I build an aggro deck, I'm going to say this in quotes, aggro deck. And I show it to you. You're like, why are these cards in this deck? Take them out. <laughs> They're not doing anything for you. That doesn't kill anybody. What are you doing? Like, I wouldn't put Marshall Banana in any of my decks, but then you do it, and I die to it every single time. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who could be who, – who's wrong there? Uh-huh. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think that, that having identity when you, when you have your decks and being prepared for that identity, having answers, is a healthy mindset in general as a player, right? Because if not, then you're just always going to be mad, you know? Like, I get, I get, I get upset when I lose in things all the time because I'm an easy tiltable, you know, white man. Oh, I'm uh, the most tiltable. Yeah, and everybody what? knows, yeah, the, <laughs> everybody the knows that. Everybody fucking salty as fuck. But you talk to him an hour later and, he, and everything's good. Uh, 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 he's not complaining about the card, right? It's just like, fuck, this sucked. I can't believe that happened. That man rolled every six in his deck. Uh, uh, I can't yeah. believe he drew 18 of this card. But, well, you know, it, it, but it wasn't about that card. It was about the, the situation and how, you know, unlucky versus lucky. And I misplayed this, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, That's, you, could be, that, you could be totally upset about your getting, yourself getting rolled. Like, people yeah. get rolled. Some people, you go on a hot streak, man. It is what yeah, it is. It, it happens. It's, it's a card game, game that it's heavily involved with luck in the way you check and draw cards. Like, it, it you there is a high variance to luck in this game so like it is entirely possible for your matchup that you think is unlosable for it to go just terribly yeah just terribly and that's like i'm not saying that you are unjustified in your in your tilt ever like you could be tilted i just don't think that having the mindset of 
well, this was such an unwinnable matchup because I couldn't play against blah, blah, blah. And these cards are so unfair and my fair cards couldn't compete. I think that's just not, not a way of looking at the game that is healthy for your own growth as a player. Yeah. Complaining all the time about cards specifically when you know that cards are going to be in the game is not healthy. You could complain to the fucking cows come home or whatever that saying is about like, I don't think I should lose to this player, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he rolled so hot, stuff like that. And like, sure, go for it, dude. But like, well, for one, you're going to seem like an asshole if you're doing that at the table. Uh, and for two, like, you're, you, you still have to have some sort of self-accountability. Like, nobody's perfect. You can't always play your moves perfectly either. Yep. Uh, m- like, my second point, though, that I wanted to make get across in this video is I also don't like blaming wins and losses on cards and calling them broken. Like, it seems kind of like a similar topic, but, like, saying – oh, I won this game because shotgun is so broken is like, I, I think it just diminishes your own ability. Like it doesn't, it doesn't put into perspective how good you are actually playing the matchup. If mm-hmm. you're just saying, well, I'm only winning because I'm playing broken cards like downward spiral or shadow slicer uh, shotgun. I'm playing Cassandra. I got this combat ash deck. Like you, you're, you're belittling your own accomplishments by saying that you're only winning because of these broken cards. Those cards are in the game. Those cards aren't going anywhere. So yeah. like, just saying that, oh, I can only win because this is so, so broken or whatever. It, it, it's, it's not the case. And I had this like example in our, one of our group chats where I said, if you take the, the 10 of the worst players and you give them the most broken meta deck and 10 of the best players and you give them a really bad deck, those 10, of those ba- those 10 bad players are probably going to win probably up to 80% of those matchups. Mm-hmm. Just because the good players are still going to know how to play. Bad players with broken cards doesn't mean you're a good player now. It doesn't mean you're a good player. So th- th- those wins aren't coming because they're playing broken cards. The wins are coming because you have like the faculties to assemble like the right lines of play, and you can you can see a little bit into like what your opponent could have for counters, such like and stuff like that, where you actually are like I don't I, I just don't I get I don't get why people are like turning their own accomplishments, their own wins into like stuff like that where it's just not a good mindset to be in where you should be like okay i'm improving i'm getting better i'm winning these games that i wasn't winning before and it's independent of like uh it's independent of everything pretty much like you don't need like i'm I'm sure these people have won with bad cards in their deck before i'm sure they've won without shotguns before it's just like just because you put shotgun in a deck and you won a game doesn't mean you won the game because you shotgun in your deck there are gonna be so many smacking noises in that scent that segment it's gonna be fucking awesome (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, shotgun <laughs> yes one one big shotgun smack at the beginning of that segment is probably enough but uh yeah I, I i like i'm somebody who really likes to to give like uh, uh you know stupid shit like a spotlight like a lot of the time i i think i think i literally have not taken the same deck to any of these legendary wolf events and there's been like 18 of them Okay, yeah. so I like playing underplayed things, right? A lot of those decks had shotgun in them. A lot of those decks had downward spirals in them. Um, a lot of them were also bad, even with shotguns and downward spirals in them, you know? And, and like, the deck wasn't using that as a crutch. It's just, that's a good card to play, right? Um, uh, looking back to when I played, like, uh, uh, a fa- I'm pretty sure I was the only person at that entire tournament at nationals playing chaos and also playing Caltrips and sand grenade. Right. Yeah. Cause those are pretty bad cards, right? Yeah. They're not, they're not great. Um, but it, you know, it's an actual combo and it worked out, uh, in the specific circumstance. Um, but nobody was playing them because it only worked for like one deck at the time. Right. And they knew that I was going to the event, so they didn't want to play the same deck, you know? Um, it, it, having playing good cards isn't a crutch. Playing good cards uh, is just an avenue for you to make good plays because you're a good player. You it know? makes your games easier, but yeah. it doesn't make it. It yeah. doesn't mean you auto win. Yeah, like, you don't have to. You don't have to gimp yourself to prove a point to anybody. You know? Yeah, no one's gonna be like, oh my god, this guy would be such a better player if he wasn't playing fucking yeah. uh, Tagoro Brothers in his deck. Yeah. Ah. 
He's like, got would, Scarlet Meteor in his deck. What a noob. Like, yeah, I, I would be lying if I weren't like, like, oh, I'm tired of seeing Moonset or I'm tired of seeing Tagura Brothers. Like, yeah, I, 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 no one likes having Spirit Gun tossed into them turn two, four games in a row. You know, I'm definitely not salty about Jose playing Yusuke to me yesterday. Uh, <laughs> but like, I identify that that's a thing that exists and I just have to deal with it, right? H- Jose is not a shit player for playing Spirit Gun and Yusuke. That's his card and it's really good and he should play it. And yeah. there's like, you shouldn't feel like, like Jose doesn't feel bad for Spirit Gunning me every turn too. That feels awesome for him, you know? But I, oh, yeah. I you just have to, you just have to deal with that. Uh, 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 and I, I don't think that Jose is a bad player for playing spirit gun his deck like oh my god yusuke needs his spirit cards you know i'm not going to tell you to go play some stupid shit just to because you have the galaxy brain and prove that you're yeah. the, the better player That's nobody not... needs to be the smartest man in the room at these events sometimes sometimes yeah. playing your nut your nuts and bolts deck is is perfectly fine if you yeah. want a net deck do you man i don't give a shit take well, my he... take my deck and play it wherever you want but it's like <laughs> that's why i don't get mad anytime anybody asks me for a list like i'm i'm more than happy to give people lists because i really love building decks and some people aren't about that right i mean like phil yeah. you've taken a few of my lists and you made them way way better jose's taken a lot of my lists and made them way way better um uh, tons of people have done that uh, uh me and and uh, uh I, I forget his name he goes by mayonnaise so he, he's just like hey man i like your ticketed list take your take and i was like yeah man have at it um, and he did really well he did better than me at the retro event um yeah because he's a great player and he's playing great cards you know, <laughs> um, but, but shocking. <laughs> um, but but like the whole point of these of playing in any any event, even if it's a casual local thing, is to win, right? Like yeah, you want to win. Uh, uh, way way back, oh, you remember Luke Butler when he worked at Jasco? Yeah, dude. Luke he, Butler like, always wore loafers everywhere. Everywhere. He he like at an event. He was like, man, I wish somebody would play Elagor. And I told him that if I I I asked him if I won an event with Elagor if he would give me a PTC ticket, you know, like a flight to a PTC. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure, we'll do it, right? And then, like, we got around and people were all, like, moving around with, with Elagor. Nobody was playing Elagor cards in Elagor. Everybody was just playing, like, big shots, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, like, the good symbol, like, package of, like, missile launchers. And the they were just, like, putting good shit into Elagor because Elagor is dog shit. And to, like you had to play it. If back. Luke Butler's watching this, he's gonna be so mad. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but like that's what I'm saying. Like maybe you put Red Lion Crest in for him because so you could get a really big dunk on your first attack and big shot. There's some synergy there, right? Like that's a neat yeah. little thing. But the point was that like we're the whole, it was a meme, right? Like try to do as well as you can with this shitty character. Um, and I re- and I, I recognize that he's a bad character that I wouldn't play in any other any other circumstance. It was a challenge, right? But the yeah, objective yeah. was still winning. So I still, if it was now and I wanted to do that, I would still put shotguns in it, and I would yeah, still put, put good cards in. It. You put good cards in. Like that's the objective is to win. Play the, you know, like oh, you're man, not gonna... you, you got to play meteor and shotgun in him. That meteor yeah. has three symbols with Elagor. <laughs> well, you wouldn't like try to fix your car with like crappy harbor freight tools that you bought for 12 bucks right yeah no way, gonna, dude. yeah you get the best tools you can maybe that's all you can afford okay i'm sorry bud um <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude but i'm not shitting on you because you can't afford yeah, nutcrackers yeah. guys okay, i'm yeah, telling yeah, yeah, you yeah. that if you have nutcrackers and yeah. don't play them you use the best literally tools you have available for you, you yeah you use, you use the what what you can the best things you have available to you to the best of your ability and sometimes that that makes magic you know uh 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 and sometimes it doesn't work out. You yeah, know? Dude, like, not everybody can afford the good suite of attacks. I understand yeah. that. I'm, not everybody's got access to four nutcrackers, four scarlet meteors, four shotguns, and can just get along with their day crushing noobs with their seven, $700 deck or whatever, you know? Yeah. Sometimes, you, sometimes you can afford one set of these cards, and you have to work with whatever one set you have. But the pro- like, you should do that to the best of your ability without – just going, well, I, I have, I'm only winning because I'm playing this specific good card. Well, you're playing the specific good card because it's good. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, it, it's, it's like a weird mindset where people think that all the cards in the game are like busted or whatever. And those are just the good cards. Like mm-hmm. the cards are good. So that's, it's, it's every card game. You just play the good ones. You don't play the bad ones in card games. Like a, a big no part one's of playing the fillers. <laughs> everyone's always going to be comparing to like their golden standard, right? Yeah. You know, so, so like, I don't know. Every, as, as far as back as I can remember, people were dying on turn two, 
right? Like, that's just my experience. Yeah. But I know people like, oh, oh, when I played Street Fighter and Turbo Man, was, he didn't kill you on turn two. Uh, the, the, the Napalm Man was the worst thing, but even he didn't, yada, yada, yada. You know, and... and oh, you can and, kill people on turn two with Napalm Man if they're seven hand size easily. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm just using a stupid example. Yeah, it's it's yeah. that lots of people have, like, this thing on their in their head that like, they want it to be exactly like it was in whatever their picture-perfect frame was. And for one thing, that's stupid. Games change, and they will continue to change, right? Yeah, games um, are always going to adapt. Yeah, I mean, like, personally, I'm kind of hoping that the My Hero set is, like, a little bit tamer, and I get to play in a tamer environment for a little while. I'm still going to play standard, right? But, like, I yeah. would totally appreciate a change of pace. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not, like, enjoying what I'm doing right now, or, like, that I'm going to, like, it, 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 I'm not bitching and complaining about how, uh, uh, Oh well, you know, back then Swingbird was the most annoying thing that I could deal with. Like, oh for, yeah, Swingbird, what a beating! Kind of came in for like fifty, and you couldn't do anything <laughs> about it because it had five speed. Had so much speed, <laughs> um, and it, and it happened on turn seven. Ah! Oh no, no, um, but 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 yeah, people just like like it, the the game is gonna change, and what the game you remember is also not as good as you remember it. Oh, it's, it's not, not dude. It's I not. swear to God, if we put if we put everybody back to just playing with the street, like we just had a Street Fighter only tournament, you could only play Street Fighter cards. Nobody would have fun. That's, that sucks. No, it's awful. That set is actually not fun. It's boring. It's super boring. <laughs> People would just play Cami and Gil, or Gaio. I mean, Cami Gaio and like Dalsim because Dalsim was insane. Dalsim was the best character in that set, and that character is, doesn't really do much. I mean, he's good. I actually think if I played Dalsim now, I I think it'd be pretty cool, but he doesn't do anything. I just like his effects. I like his effects that don't do anything. <laughs> They're so vanilla. Everything in that set was super vanilla, and it's fine. Like that's a cool, that's like a fun like set to have, I guess, around. But like, if 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 those cards were like, it, it doesn't matter that they got power creep. They got power creep by sets before them too. Like, yeah. they weren't as good as previous sets. They yeah, aren't as good. People were as still preferring stuff. the Mega Man stuff to the Street Fighter stuff. People weren't playing the... Street Fighters. Like, yeah. Street Fighter characters weren't getting played. Still, it was still like you could play Vega, you could play Guile. People didn't even play Gao. You could play Vega or you could play like Dalsim. And right. those are like pretty much the only ones people played. Some people tried Cami. Some people tried Guile, like I said. But that was it. You had four characters. <laughs> that was it. There were the four characters in the Street Fighter's 20 million character meta that yeah. were actually playable. And now like I like going back and looking at some of this stuff because like obviously the gauge stuff has become more prevalent. And like throwing like Akuma 1 on Akuma 2 and the 3 and stuff is cool. And throwing like bison on top of bison is nuts. Like it's so cool. It's like it's like craziest Tiguro brothers of all time. Like oh, yeah. just get it on everything. And I think those cards are like I think those cards have a place. I just don't think that like jumping back and going well this meta was fine the way it was really like explains to people nowadays like like I I feel like everybody's having fun now except for like people who are salty about it. Like I think everybody's having fun. Like, if, if I can have fun and try and play control decks in a meta where everybody dies on turn one and two, like, now we're dying on, like, three and four, and that's exciting. That's long game now, baby. We got yeah. lots of time. The long game. You mean I can build out for three turns before trying to kill your ass? Yeah, dude, we got boy, the oh, long boy. game now. No more downward spirals. Whew. Yeah. Whole new world. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, what I, would, what I want people to do more is to, like, instead of being, like, God, it's so fucking annoying and so. Uh, I wish I would ban it, right? Because there's always going to be something that's at the top, right? You, yeah. You get rid of this tier now. This tier's up there. Um, it's just Stuff, try to. It's, ad- yeah, it's it's a moving uh, tier. Try to address it. Like like personally, I really don't like people attacking me. Disres- I say disrespectfully. It's not disrespectful. Like, they're just playing to the game plan, right? Like like a, yeah. like a, like. Like when Rando like does his thing and just strings eight attacks in a row and they all have eight eight on it, it really sets me off. I like because because it feels like like I didn't matter in that in that matchup, right? Yeah, you know, or, or like yeah, yeah. Or, or or like uh, uh, when somebody plays a bunch of five difficulty attacks in Samina and just like loops the ever living shit out of it, or on turn one attacks me with with several moon ritual dances and things like that. I don't like playing into that. Right, so I play my decks trying to be able to interact with that stuff. I want to touch it, touch it, touch it on your things, because that's the things that I'm afraid of. Right, so yeah. I'm gonna play against those things in a way, because because I know that that's a weakness for me. My decks don't typically have interaction for that. Um, 
So, so like whatever your thing is, right? Like if, if you're Phil and you're like, I don't like it when people use servant of Aries on me. So I'm going to stuff this, uh, yeah, I got bison police connections one. in my deck, dude. <laughs> or, 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 well, you stuff Bison 1 into your Bison 2 deck so that you can have all of the answers all the time, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, do that, right? Instead of just complaining about it uh, <laughs> on Discord for ad infinitum, you know? Yeah, ad you're nauseum. not, like, nobody is, nobody is, like, you're not, you guys in your, like, circle, the Discord circle jerk is so real. It's like, mm-hmm. I hate this card. Somebody else responds, I hate this card. Other person goes, well, I hate this other card. And then it just like loops in a big circle. Yeah. Echo like, chambers are real dangerous for sure. It, it's, it's a weird, and that's kind of where I was getting at with this video. Like I joined the yeah. discord again and I was like, why is everybody just bitching about everything all the time? And yeah. then my roommate's playing against people in the discord. And he's like, I don't understand why these people are bitching about like, they're like my good cards when they're just playing bad cards. And I'm like, well, well that's because they want to play their bad decks and you, 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 you went into an environment where like you, you are trying to play them and you know, just flex your, like, I like my maxi deck. So I want to play my cool maxi deck and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. if you're running into people who aren't playing good cards, they're going to think that your cards are like insane. And it's like, no, you're just playing the good cards of the meta. And they're playing like, uh, what's that one, one, five Tom card you really like sucks. Uh, you, dancing blades yeah dancing blades they're playing like dancing blades tom and you're like well i can't do anything about that dude. hey i'm using it to pick up noobs that's yeah, super cool still sucks it, yeah but i'm not playing that all the time am i <laughs> it's, it's just true. funny it's just really funny i want to play funny shit uh, I, uh okay so a couple weeks ago i played i played fey i played a water fey and i got turn one by 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 a, a satoshi i just dropped two down oh, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. This was downward spiral medicine. Yeah, it was, was a like, downward no way, dude. Yeah, I got I got turn one by it. I was I was I was done. I was like, I think I need to take a break from these online tournaments. I'm like, because that was not the first time I got turn one by downward spirals. It was just super unfun for me, and I didn't like I couldn't think in my head. Like I sideboarded in all of my big cyclones. Yeah. I I played four um pure of heart. I had emergency rations. I was just like, I feel like I did all the right things, and I it's just it's turn one. I couldn't find my pieces, and it sucks. I think I need a break, right? And I talked in the Discord about it. Right? I was just like, I'm, I'm fucking like, I, I'm just tired of this shit. I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with this right now. Um, and and like, I never said ban downward spiral publicly, right? Like, I was just like, I fucking hate that card. I don't like dealing with it, right? Yeah. Um, and and I and you know, I was saying I tried to address it in my stuff. And, and but like like personally, I I think it's it, it's it's a really really hard to deal with. So I, I think I need to take a break from the and I did. I took a week off from the, from the event because I just like, but it wasn't because of the card, right? It was because personally for my mindset, it felt so awful the place that I went to, right? Like like yeah, I, like I, oh, I, I got to play this game so much, yeah. Well, so but we, it's it's not even that. Like like if I could play the game and still have fun, I'd be there for it, right? And it's yeah. not just it's not just like like. I, I think the downward spiral should have been banned, but I, I know that if I went to that place uh, on the Discord, it probably would have, and it did, it did go to that place anyway. I, I, I shouldn't, I honestly shouldn't have been venting like that. I should have just done what I normally do and cry at Natasha or something like that. Yeah, dude. Natasha, <laughs> Natasha, there for all of your salty downward spiral yeah, tears. She was working, and that's the problem. I had to vent at the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, but like, like, I don't know. Someone will probably go back and screenshot all the things and see the part where I was like super, I was doing all the things that we're describing. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we can all be there. It's fine. It's just Uh, like everybody gets there, you know, everybody ends up in in certain spots where it's like, this is like a negative experience and it's just like, I I'm pissed, blah, 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 fucking shout at the world and like all these things. And like, it is, it is entirely reasonable to do so like in certain circumstances, but it's just like, it, what is actually getting benefit? No one's learning there. No one's yeah. developing strategies to beat this. Nobody is like increasing their own knowledge. Uh, nobody is like figuring out their own deck situation to 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 develop like uh, strategies against these things and stuff like that. I don't have problem with people playing bad decks. I have mm-hmm. people problem with people who play bad decks and then do not learn anything from playing them. Right. You could play the worst deck in the entire world, but if you learned something or you learned how to make your worst deck a little bit better, you you are progressing as a player. You are like getting some respect from like the, the your community because you're probably asking questions. Um, but like you, like the the echo chamber thing is very much so just people wanting to complain that their decks aren't working 
not working to fix their decks and then like expecting the same results when they build another deck that is also like substandard and like uh like a tier three deck and they're playing against people who are playing real cards like you are just doing the same thing expecting different results as opposed to trying to find like the very like best solutions in standard to deal with it and if, if you don't think that the s- solutions are satisfactory then it's not about like getting pissed it's about changing like your game plan Mm -hmm. you have to change up your game plan you have to change up your deck a little bit you have to change what character you're playing maybe to fit your same style but also can combat a little bit better it's just like it's i know it's easy for me to say and it's easy for you to say is is we've we've played the game at a very high level um for you you for a couple years me forever in Mm -hmm. the entire history of the world uh i've been playing since 2006 so i've got a lot of experience uh, mm-hmm. with the universal fighting system and now universes um but like you you I, and i i've been there back like as a kid i mean 14 years ago i was 14 years old playing ufs and like nobody's shittier than 14 year olds both at card games and then in real life <laughs> so i've been there like pissed off that i can't win and like blaming other things and stuff but it's just like it is important for you to gain experience and knowledge um maybe you get like you talk to some of your better players you talk to somebody in your community who's respected you talk to one of your locals it's like some of your locals maybe they're not the best players in a national level but they're like your best local players and they want to give you advice i'm sure like the community is usually i have i mean i don't know anybody that's well i know a couple people who i think are just shit for the community but like i ignore them and never have talked to them before in my entire life anyway so it's me Oh, it's definitely not you. Uh, <laughs> I can think of at least one person who's killed a couple playgroups out west that uh, that maybe uh, maybe maybe uh, is a little bit shittier of a person than most. I so so I, I think like like don't I wouldn't say don't play bad decks, right? Because kitchen table UFS is as fun as it's ever been, and and like I think it's 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 like if you take your kitchen table UFS to an event, don't expect like like don't blame your bad performance on somebody else playing good cards right and if you're playing locally right like with your local play group like i would i would all the time i'd just be like you know the two guys that i really looked up to locally were, were my friend goose and ryan hoffman who are both incredibly good players goose won a ptc ryan tops at national and yeah and World and events really all the time. Good. very good players and i would just like i want to play your best deck over and over and over and over again and they would beat my ass continuously i mean like i think out of all the time that goose played his twinkle murdoch deck i beat it twice and it was probably 200 times i played that deck against that deck you know and, and like i just wanted i wanted to figure out a way to beat it to play around it like I, and i tried so many different things to do it um but at the same time sometimes i was just like so beaten to, to, to shit i'd be like let's play let's play a different deck like play your your chun deck ryan you know yeah play or, something fun or like whatever. like let's let's do fun stuff like it's healthy and good to be able to be like hey man let's take a sec back here and let's play stupid dicks right like let's have fun you know um but but segment those right categorize those things don't bleed them into each other because that's where the salt really comes into play right like that's why i was so upset because i like i cherish like you know playing Faye because that's what I, i really started you know doing well with but she's not great right now. Water symbol in general, not great right now. No. I shouldn't have expected to be doing well at all in any just and, and of course, you know, I, I'm upset when I, that I did poorly with that. So I was, I, I was letting myself get into the negative feedback loop. Um, and it's not healthy. Like, like make your silly stuff, have fun with your silly stuff. And if you do well with it, that's so awesome. Right. You know, like, like uh, when I played Quan Chi at nationals before Sung Dina was, was released, nobody was playing Quan Chi, right? Yeah, nobody at all was playing that character. Um, I thought he was really good, and I put so many iterations into it that I made a good deck, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, they got banned again. And it got so, banned again, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then some other stuff. Came. It's the same thing with 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 uh, uh, Takeda, right? Things released that made him better. And, yeah. like, I'm, I'm more, I was more prepared for it than other people because I've been iterating it for... You've been playing it for so fucking for long. For so long, yeah. you know? And so that might happen to your deck, too, right? You might be playing Talon 2 and, like, and, like, you're you're the best talent two player but she doesn't have the right tools right now you know like keep that stuff under lock and key and then eventually sometimes that might that might come back and oh there's a card that stuffs your card pool of four attacks from your fucking discard pile and then you pick up four from your from your staging yeah. area, right like like you know something like that might happen and that makes your character fucking nuts 
uh, 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 but but recognize that right in the right now, maybe that isn't. And I, I don't know. Maybe somebody has a nutty, nutty talent two deck that's killing people all the time. So maybe they're, I'm yeah, they're just, they're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But 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 uh, the point remains that like like make sure that you 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 don't uh, uh, don't misconstrue things that shouldn't be right. Uh, there's a very fine line between what we're we're talking about and what are actual bannable broken as fuck cards, right? Shield yeah. being. 100 percent deserve to be banned right uh, yeah you I th- mean like your deck could play four attacks yeah i mean that's I th- not ufs right now i think that downward spiral could have survived without the void enhance on it um but it deserved to get banned or yeah we're they talking uh, things, we're talking right? strictly on a, in a on a level of they probably shouldn't be dropping a lot of erratas and yeah. i mean we've had that talk before we've yeah. already had like that that whole that whole talking piece of like it could have been eroded but yeah. But a lot of the cards that people were talking about being like broken or oh, oh ban shotgun, ban uh, scarlet meteor. These are not cards that are as consistent in turning in in, in removing your opponent from the process as Shiba Bang, Spiral, yeah. and, and things like that are. Right? Like Hellfire, readying everything all the time. If you high roll and get all four Hellfires, that removes you your win. opponent from the yeah. That removes Pretty the much. opponent yeah, from the equation. Win. Right? Shiba Bang uh, removes the opponent from the equation. Um, uh, uh, Scarlet Meteor at no point removes the opponent from the equation. You need you need to have pieces in order to loop that at all. And most of the yeah. time, it's a lot of pieces. You need momentum in order to feel the powerful rating. You need a lot of assets if you're going to be going that route. Yeah. Um, Shotgun needs a ton of things in your pool, which means your check is going to be extremely difficult. You can't do that on turn two without some serious check loop, which means you have either a character like Yusuke that does it, right, or a bunch of foundations that that loop your check, right. So there are there's tons of points of interaction for these cards. Um, and it's important to think about it from that point of view, that angle, that there are... Right, where is the interaction? Yeah, where is the interaction, right? Uh, 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 if, if, if you're actually getting turn one at a, as a 30 health character, there's probably something, like, consistently, all the time, then maybe you start asking questions about this thing. Or perhaps if you're in a situation where you literally cannot win, like Twinkle Murdoch back in the day, right? Like, oh, yeah. You were put in a situation where, like, this character was just winning every single time she wanted to do anything. And she said no to wherever you had. And it didn't matter you knew what was in her hand because she was going to kill you anyway, right? Like, yeah, that's unhealthy. <laughs> that's unhealthy. But but at the time, right, at the, the I think that my reaction to it was to try to build shit to play into it because I addressed it was a thing, and I'm not the guy in charge. I'm not the guy in charge. I can yeah, complain we, about it all the time. Exactly. And I can privately call, talk to somebody like, hey, this isn't okay, right? But, like, publicly, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I think it's important for for the culture of the game and for and for your locals and for the people that you play with, your mental health as well, to just try to address it, Right and 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 to to play to the best of your ability with the best tools at your disposal um and and then you know be proud at the end of the day with how how well you did or didn't you know and if you fucked up and you're upset about that because you fucked up be be upset because you're because you fucked up and not because your opponent played this broken card like no no you're the one who forgot to to respond with shell the proud man and kill yeah scott you're the one that didn't beat scott <laughs> Simon, dude. don't play that on scott Simon. that's your fault that's my fault 100 that's your fault man yeah 100 percent just learn most importantly guys just learn to read learn to um, read yeah but no i mean we've had several conversations um i mean throughout like the history of like you playing where it's just like oh this card's broken blah 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 like we talked about a uh, 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 kuma's pizza card when that when that was like a problem i don't remember what his pizza card's name is enlightened uh, by defeat enlightened by defeat looks like he's got pepperonis everywhere like yeah. that was a big topic of conversation a couple like the atlanta ptc uh mm-hmm. i believe it was last year where um er, there was like three akumas and like it was just kind of nuts and all of them had like a really good record because like the cards are just so silly yeah. and like we talked about it but like you fast forward a year later nothing got banned but like akuma isn't like just overpowering so sometimes it's like yeah. about not jumping the gun which i can really appreciate um you know, maybe them holding holding their cards a little bit and just going, "Hey guys, slow down, slow down," and we'll get like we get to a point where that like isn't necessarily um, as big of a problem. Yeah, I, I mean, I was one of the Akumas at the event, and in fact, I only brought Akuma because I thought he was broken, and I was like, "I'm gonna win this event because this character's broken." And I called my shot. You can go back into this channel and you can find the video where I played Akuma to Jackie Briggs. The beginning of the video, I was like, "I'm gonna play this at the Atlanta PTC, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna win this event because it's broken." And like that was me calling my shot. I got diversified by Ben Shoemaker, um, 
Ben yeah. Shoemaker and I were, were talking at that event about how nuts Enlightened by a Defeat was. Uh, but as it turns out, like, that deck was, it, it was all high roll. Um, high roll decks feel dissatisfying for the opponent. Like, it, uh, uh, high roll, like, aggro, right? A lot of times, if they get to do their thing and they go, they go first sort of things, it, it doesn't feel great. Um, uh, I think, I, I, think I, I jumped the gun. Right, like uh, there was plenty of interaction for Akuma. I think that Tim Keefe at the time had a great uh, uh, call for the meta. Right, Lilith yeah, was really, Lilith. really great into Akuma, um, and and I'm willing to, to take that and say that I was fucking wrong. I shouldn't. I, I should have. Oh, for sure. I should have thought like Tim Keefe did and been like, "How do I address this this thing?" Instead of complaining about it, about how Akuma tossed this 400 damage thing. I still think admission fees is a piece of shit in Akuma. Oh yeah, I mean, I was. <laughs> but, I, I, I feel like you could go back on record and I would yeah. definitely have been saying that if we're dealing with Akuma as a problem, we get rid of admission fees because it's the closest card to rotate and not get rid of any of his cards because he needs yeah. them to function. Like I, all these Akuma decks that I've been playing, I specifically am not playing admission fees because I, yeah. I think it's a stupid card. And, 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 it, and, it, and it's just like, it, it makes weak Akuma players, uh, uh, it rewards really weak play, I think, like not measured yeah. play. And I really like Akuma because he's a... He's like a true control character, right? Yeah. Like he 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 was my answer to people trying to turn one me, you know. Um, That's not a bad answer. It's not. I mean, like, no, you're not going to keep going. You're going to get minus four to your check, and it's back in your hand, you know. Um, but 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 yeah yeah yeah. I think that I think that Akuma wasn't as much of a promise, and and like Noob, for example, if they had if they had. Just like uh, listen to everybody and banned him right away. I just was on oh. a thread on Facebook where I was like, I don't think people are even playing Noob anymore, guys. Yeah, I'm like, like the only guy still playing Noob in these events. Like, I think Noob is very good or whatever, but it's like, yeah, it's not that good, you know. Yeah. Like, it's even, it's a, it's another action. It's 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 the same knee jerk reaction everybody had to Gateway Shuffle, myself included, when I called the people who yeah. work at Jesco Games apes and got banned from their Facebook page because <laughs> I thought they were like reprinting of Surge Strength. And it made no sense to me. It turns out that card is not really in the meta, except for fringe circumstances. And it's basically just you who I see ever play it. You and Jose are yeah. the only people I ever see play Gateway Shuffle. Yeah. And well, I guess I think it was in a. I think it was in Sniper Joe when we won. It was in uh, Sniper Joe. Yeah. I think it was were, in Sniper Joe when we won national. But that was a specific meta call, right? Like it was very yeah. good into Liu Kang. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. I. I definitely. I. I I've. I've learned from. From. You know. Uh, uh, the Akuma situation specifically that like knee jerking and calling for bands like that uh it's not healthy for anybody especially yourself because you just end up in a really toxic place and nobody wants to be there yeah i guess a third thing that i think would be good to talk about and this is pretty much a far jump from everything else in in terms of like calling people out for their bad behaviors and stuff mm -hmm. it's remember that old characters still exist yeah like, that is a huge, huge thing that I think is a big problem in UFS. Like, you get your new shiny toys and you forget about all the characters that should still be good in the meta. Yeah. No one plays Scorpion. Yeah. Scorpion is a free speed reduction character with a plus six damage pump on, on so many good cards. And he also punishes your opponent for blocking. Scorpion yep. should have been in the meta the entire existence of his character card because there's nothing that should right. have pushed him out. Nothing was printed to push Scorpion out of the meta they're nothing it's just one of those things where you get your shiny new toys and it's the same thing with in my opinion jackie briggs i think jackie briggs is still a remarkable character but you don't Nuts. see jackie briggs being played yeah. because like you get your shiny new toys and you just you push everything out yoshimitsu nobody plays yoshimitsu now kevin plays yoshimitsu yeah, it's, it's like these characters are all so good and for some reason like it's just like everybody sees a new set and then like their minds just freeze and you just mm -hmm. forget about everything back here like everything in the in the past is just gone. Yeah. Like so many Mortal Kombat characters are so nuts. Bebop mm -hmm. characters are still nuts. Like you, you 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 there's no reason for like a game with such a like large meta, like a, a 10 set meta, which is it's fine. I don't have any problems with that. But like there's I don't know, probably over 100 character cards or so, 200 maybe. I don't really care to count. A lot. Come from It's a lot. Room. It's a yeah. lot, but it's just like why are we pushing out things that were already established as good decks? Like it, it took like weird circumstances. It takes really weird circumstances and like weird meta diving for people to like get back to these characters. And it doesn't particularly make sense to me that like they just disappear. 
like I, I am a person who constantly thinks of Vega decks. Like I never build them and I don't really conceptualize them too often, but I'm always like, what, how can we get Vega good? How can mm -hmm. we do this with Vega? Because I really like Vega. I really like the interaction. I don't necessarily think he's lost his seat in a meta that's primarily an aggro meta when he can slow down your opponent um, very, very well. Uh, we have 174 plus whatever's in the DLC for standard characters. Okay. Uh, that's probably give or take a few because there's probably doubles in here. But There's four DLCs, four characters in each one of them. So About this... 200 characters, we'll call it. Yeah. Say roughly 200. Yeah, roughly. I mean, this is this is just from Ultra, which has reprints of stuff, but yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, it, it's just like, I, I will constantly think of like a Vega deck, and I was talking to you about one yesterday, and it's just like, I, I think that some people should have the same energy with other characters in the game. Like, I I don't see anybody talk, like, I haven't heard anybody talk about Maxi in, in quite some time. Like, I heard talk about Maxi on Maxi's re-release, and then I saw nobody play it. And like, it just like, he disappeared from existence again. Like he, right. he, like he's just gone. And it's just like, I think Maxi's really good. And Maxi's honestly like a newer character still. If mm -hmm. you count the like reprint, like he came out a single set ago. He came out in like last November yeah. or whatever. In Soul Calibers too. So it's just like, it doesn't make sense for car characters like that to be disappearing or even like uh, Cassie Cage. I don't see a lot of like, you, you, you see a lot of the same like defend, like, like the same like weird decks over and over again where people were like that's fine yes we're going to be building this but you don't see like any of the good stuff from the past mm -hmm. still like beating out some of these newer meta picks that aren't necessarily as good and it, it, it kind of like baffles me to an extent there's just like well they, game they just... speed game speed really matters right cassie cage wants to build for quite a bit and defend as well um and she doesn't necessarily survive particularly well to like giant dunks right you know like like she wants to she wants to chain block with shadow inheritance and things like that um so so stuff like that sometimes comes into play um like but there's no reason why like yoshimitsu or like salinka uh yeah even loose. salinka where's Salinka yeah. at uh, i can think <laughs> of a few like like okay so some people have like like a signature character, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people won't touch Turner Loose because Dave Wagner had a thing on it and diversity is a thing. And that's a totally different discussion we should never have. Fuck, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, but like, there's no, like, like take your shot. And, and especially when you're doing locals and like anything happening right now does not have diversity. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then the other bit is just that like new shiny thing is new shiny thing, right? Um, one of the great parts about the game is that you can take new shiny thing and apply it to an older character, right? Like Maxi, for instance, w even though he came with the, the Soul Calibur 6 Part 2 Electric Boogaloo set, uh, really is, is like the best shotgun slash bamboo blind slice character in the format. Uh, he blocks with a bamboo and then shoves a foundation in his pool and then gets a momentum to fuel bamboo, right? Yeah. Like there's, there's things like that that, that nobody... I, I think well, Ryan Hoffman played that deck at Worlds. Um, and it's a great deck, and uh, I'm surprised he didn't do better than he did. I'm also surprised I didn't do as well as he should have. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, but the, the like, you're right. Lots of people don't go back and look at things, right? It, it, they don't want to retread something that's already been done, right? Like Jet is insane. Everybody wants that, to like reinvent the wheel. Well, but that's the thing. Do reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Look, look at Jet with with like. Uh, all the breaker two attacks yeah. off a of good and what? Julia's card, you know, like yeah. all, there's so much stuff that's that's cool for him. I do think it's cool that like like Donovan seen some resurgence. Uh, Akuma uh, obviously seeing yeah. some some new play. Um, I think I played a cami at this at this event too, or during this week. It's not really an event; it's like locals. But um, uh, I, I enjoy that people are playing older stuff too, right? And and that's part of the. I, that's the nature of the beast because we haven't had any uh, any sets in a while. Yeah. So people, so the Soul Calibur characters kind of lose their uh, appeal because you're like, okay, I've played Cassandra four hundred times. Yeah, right? What do I do now? Um, but 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 yeah, I I do think that when shiny new thing comes out, the first thing you should do before making shiny new character is take that shiny new character stuff and apply it to old stuff because you learn more about the cards that way. When you take it out of the context of the synergistic, like like since it's made for that character, right? If you yeah. apply it in in a package sort of situation, you learn more about the uses of the card. When you use a card in its intended circumstance, you just learn how to do that one thing that it was written for, right? 
And UFS is so much interaction, so many layers upon layers of, of combinations that you can make that you, you will find more lines of play doing the weird thing than you will doing the more conventional thing, right? Um, like, like, uh, 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 oh my goodness, uh, JJ was playing that Cassandra deck with the Shield Big Bangs. Yeah. And, and like, when I was playing it with Quan Chi, they didn't have as many answers for things, for, for me flipping it or discarding from the card pool. So he was, like, using Shiden Ketsu to increase the keyword rate, or, or, or to, to decrease the damage to zero, and then buffing something huge, right? And trying to kill me with that, right? Like, that's not a... He had a card in there that was not intended for that deck, um, and then it just ended up being making this really cool line of play, right? Yeah. Um, because it was taken out of context of the original uh, uh, situation. Um, and... Uh, the same thing is applied, like the flame war package in Takeda is crazy, and that's obvious, right? Um, but but you know if if people weren't doing that, if uh, I forget his name, I, th- I think it was like Will something. If he hadn't played it at Worlds, right? Like maybe it wouldn't be on the map. It wouldn't be. Yeah, people would be less likely to see it potentially. Yeah, and and, and people forget that they, that we're playing such a small game, right? Um, that not a whole ton of people play this. So when there's thirty people in an event, and like, oh, why is there no Iori in this retro event? Well, it's because there's 30 people. It's only 30 people. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get every single nutty thing, um, even though it, by all rights, should be there, right? Um, so, so I wouldn't let that color your brain power for how a deck would have performed. It's the same thing with, like, a PTC during, like, the normal tournament season, where if you don't, like, maybe you don't see, like, I don't know if there was a Scorpion at any PTC event last year that did well in my like i don't remember maybe there was but then like i show up to worlds and people were like oh yeah i forgot about that guy and it's like i mean he's been always good like yes they did print a a throw that makes him like a pretty bit like pretty good and then they obviously shadow slicer but even those like he still was good before that because it's not like the desperation attack quality in his own support is that low that he was just like ah i guess these cards just don't fucking work anymore like coffee samba was still a card and then like he still got like niche support from other stuff like throughout his experience like and yes inferno support immediately made him very very good like it probably pushed him to like the top tier mm-hmm. um where where is kind of like remarkable that nobody else was playing him yeah. um but like i believe that actually there might have been one other guy but i don't know what his deck was doing and he wasn't winning uh so that's fine uh but it's just like he, he was good before that and like it was like i've only ever seen like tamarin cardwell play him yeah and it was right after Mortal Kombat came out. Well, no, I, I mean, he's right? played him in a few events. But oh, really? Yes. Okay. Like, he played him, I think he moved at that at Nationals. He played mm-hmm. him at, like, a PTC in St. Louis that I went to, and uh, I believe okay. he won. Uh, he got second place at that uh, PTC in Rockford, where he lost to Mark Tyner. Right. Like, Tamron's been, like, the premier Scorpion player. And I guess that's fine. Like, you said that there's, like, a signature pick, pretty much. But it's just, mm-hmm. like... Um, he just he, he wasn't being made by the inferno cards like the inferno yeah. cards didn't make scorpion suddenly playable again they made him much better they put him to like an s tier character pretty much because yeah. like you just could shove damage on that set's cards and you could shove like speed and stuff on those cards and those cards become infinitely more insane the more life you pay the more speed they have stuff like that and they're like obviously quicker to get you down to your plus six pump but it's just like um that that particular instance like really confused me i guess when especially when i got to like playing it like once i got down to like i sat down with the cards after my roommate kicked my ass with scorpion 700 times in a row with my tim keith deck when i realized i could not deal with a 14 damage throw very easily right uh, surprising really you know oh. shocker real shocker i couldn't deal with vision madness in my seven hand size character deck very well but it's just like you I got my ass kicked so much and then I was like playing it and I was like, Oh, this deck is insane. And then I go like, we go to worlds and no one's playing it. And it's just like, how did nobody else put two and two together unless they were just looking at results based stuff or new stuff and like kind of going on that type of journey where you don't look towards past things because you think that maybe they just got power crept out. Well, like for, for the newer players, like this isn't, this isn't Pokemon. Like we don't we don't power creep our sets one at a time just so we can sell packs. Like we don't put the best deck, the whole archetype in one set, and then like just keep on pushing down deck lists like that. Which uh, was my experience in Pokemon like 2010. I don't know if that's a thing anymore. I assume it still is because that. I mean that's just the way that game has pretty much always been. Right. But like, or or even like Magic. I I don't know if it necessarily functions that way, but I believe it does. Or like Yu Gi Oh and stuff where like you get a set. 
the sets cards are the best set or the best decks uh print out a new set it's either an answer to it or it's another best deck but only like the the outstanding like the outliers are like this deck's archetype was so nuts from this set that it like pushes like it still perceives like through into like a ban list or something right ufs is like very much not like that just because it's not like super archetype driven like you you do have your archetypes but like you you have such a diverse cast of characters to be able to throw these archetypes on top of that typically like a diverse like a desperation deck has like it could be fielded by probably like 10 characters yeah and they could field it well yeah, I agree with that. I, 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 I like it's, it's. There's like character-driven sort of archetypes, and there's synergy-driven archetypes. You know, yin and yang sort of decks, reversal decks, um, and then there's the the package type deals that can yeah. be put on a ton of different things, right? And the desperation package is very good and can be put on a ton of different things. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think that people would would do better to have their 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 sort of old stuff that they they can use as a benchmark for how well a, yeah. a, a deck goes with, you know, like um, for a long time for me, that was Faye, right? When I felt like Faye was pushed out, that's when I knew I had to hop onto a new sort of character when I just like could not keep up anymore um, because I didn't have speed hate and speed is really, really big right now, right? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so it's it's important to, to, to for, for identifying too, like, like when does it, when a character does reach a point where it can't compete, um, then you know what to look for in this other character, right? Like, right. J- like Jackie Briggs is mostly gated by her symbol spread, right? Uh, life is really good, of course, uh, um, but water and air are not particularly competitive. Yeah, right? they're not great. Um, and life doesn't offer a whole ton in terms of speed hate in general either. She mostly gets by by having by being able to build not like a five hander while having five hand size life, right? Yeah. Um, and then aggressing not like a five hander either if she draws her big draw three card. Um, so, so it's good to look at characters like that and figure out where the limit is, right? Yoshimitsu is a character that you could easily find that, right? What if they stop printing weapons, he will probably stagnate, right? Yeah. But as it, yeah, goes, yeah. Right, as it goes right now, they keep printing weapons. He's going to be good, right? He's going to continue being good. Maybe he takes a hit because they got rid of Shadow Slicer and all was his best symbol. Um, uh, but but he's still great, I, I'm sure. And like some, you know, somebody other than Kevin Brubber can go and you know concoct some some cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, like I mean, fucking Yoshimitsu top aided like nat like Worlds 2019 mm-hmm. or not top eighty top sixteen that and like Mark Wisniewski was on pace to do like a very good job of like probably competing for like an actual championship if he didn't run into his literal worst matchup in top sixteen, which was Jetta that i played uh Uh, that is literally yoshimitsu's worst matchup he ran into it immediately and that is the story of so many people who could have went on runs at these events where like your deck like it's it's not necessarily that like you didn't play well kind of thing you know yeah but uh i I guess like i would just like more I, i guess on your your what you were saying like stick with the things you liked playing like, say you, you got a new set come out and you do want to try the new stuff. That's totally fine. Try out the new stuff. Look at it. See if anything fits your style. But also try some of that old stuff in – or some new stuff with some of your old decks that you you, you like to, to play. Say you do focus on, like, a uh, – like, you you love Ken 2. You're Miles Tyler and you're like, fuck it. I'm going to fuck around with, my like, Ken 2 for all eternity until Terry's in the game again because I fucking love Terry and Ken 2 or whatever. All right. But, like, you got to be able to look at your Ken deck um, with new pieces. You have to be able to, like, visualize new pieces and not necessarily think that your old pieces are still the best strategy. And you have to also be able to look at new cards, like new characters, and say, do these characters fit my strategy or things I like better? Um, if you're a fanboy-like player, like that, obviously, feel free to be excluded from the, the play it on a new character thing. But, like you can still get your fanboy characters up to speed on a new meta, uh, assuming you, you are willing to be flexible. Um, and I think everybody has a bit of a fanboy character to themselves and it might not necessarily be somebody you love from the game, uh, but like you, you've all connected with a, like a UFS cards, like abilities and been like, these are so cool. I want to play these. I love these. Like I, I've built 7 billion DJ decks. I built seven million uh, Vega decks. Uh, D- 
uh, Janet decks. Sorry, not DJ the character. Her yeah, Street yeah. Fighter character sucks wiener. <laughs> uh, I've helped build a million DJ decks though because my roommate really liked DJ. Um, but like Vega from Street Fighter, I've built a million decks. Like it, it's just stuff like that where like I love to play like a controlled deck uh, game plan kind of thing where I like I like when my opponents aren't having fun. So like I I will often revisit these cards or like these symbols or these like character types where I try and like just maneuver around like the types of cards I play uh, pretty much in all of the same decks. Like they're all like pretty much the same. It's like usually evil cards. It's usually got princess Perry. It's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I try to maneuver those around like different decks to see which one it fits in. And if it doesn't fit, like we move on to something else or if it does fit, we try and test it out. And then I get rolled by meta decks and then it's, it's, it, it's just like you, you got to be able to like commit and try these things out. Um, you can fanboy, um, but try and keep it within the grounds of like, yes, you are going to try new stuff. Uh, you're going to try new stuff in your fanboy. You're not going to bitch when your fanboy deck doesn't work out very well because we've already covered that topic. Uh, yeah. You're not going to complain that you're losing to broken cards with your fanboy deck because that's just never going to be good for anything. Right. And it's just like, I know this, this topic could go much broader and like, I, I would love to like follow it up with like specific examples of like way to ways to like help people improve in specific things like specific ways of like thinking and stuff like that but i just wanted to go like on a very broad level like uf ufs is a hard game it is hard to figure out all the answers you need to be playing it's very hard for you to like figure out how to fix your decks uh to hyper tune them into like this fucking perfect death ball where like you're not so worried about your answers you're not so worried about losing consistency mm -hmm. and like you you've got this super good deck and like the meta is fine for you and like you hit this and you just fucking shove it into this perfect little circle and you got like i don't know you fucking core drill like gurren Lagan and you make a goddamn giant super mega mech like and you throw a universe at somebody else like it's hard to super cram all that together and like once you do get it all like into this tight little bubble, you still have to run matchups. You got it. like the game is super hard. It it doesn't necessarily always feel like the most rewarding thing, but you have to understand that you're going to get better by focusing more on your game plan, your plays, yourself, than worrying about what everybody else is doing. Uh, whether it be what they're playing at events whether it be what cards they're playing in their deck what cards you perceive to be like meta outliers those things aren't like you you have to be aware of them but they don't necessarily define your play style um and they shouldn't limit your growth uh, because it's it's it it isn't it isn't like it's the end of the world for you if if you run into these things like you're all gonna get by we're all gonna survive another day covid sucks we're gonna play ufs again in person one day i'm gonna keep playing my shitty bad decks at ptc's trying to show up at world championships and like you're all gonna do the same you're all gonna try and beat me with weird stuff i'm gonna have to read your cards and it's gonna be fine like we're all gonna get there in the end it's just like no one you, we need you to be gaining experience not having a negative experience so much that you are like turning yourself off to like a very good game yeah 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 and stagnating because of it right and stagnating because of it correct yeah, yeah yeah uh that's really all i think we we got for the day man i i think that's a pretty good topic i mean maybe a little long-winded in parts but <laughs> i think everybody always enjoys watching us talk about shit anyway so i think we could we could talk about fucking anything and just like especially shotgun literally for like all eternity because it's all any single podcast is about but like I, I believe that like this should be helpful, at least from a mindset perspective for some people. I know that some people aren't going to change from this, but the people who are willing to change are the people who are going to keep growing and keep getting better at the game. Um, and, and like just advance into this new world of my hero academia and just like a fucking Phoenix out of the ashes of UFS to fucking cardboard or whatever it is that you win in that game. Yeah. A good example for this is look at like guys like Merck Tyner and Jacob Johnson. Those two are like the, the UFS savants at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. You know, I think, I think it's, it's like Mark Tyner is the best UFS player at the moment, right? hundred uh, percent. Uh, he's extremely quick. Um, he's, he's very, very clever. He makes great decks. Uh, he's innovative. He's a, and he's also a great player, right? 
Um, but if you ask those guys about busted carts, their answer is not going to be, oh, it's so busted, fuck that cart. It's going to be, that's so busted, I love it. Yeah. Every time. I guarantee it. Every single time they're going to say, it's so busted, I love that cart. Um, and that's the mindset of the winner, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no kidding. Literally. Literally, I've literally the watched. I literally watched JJ get his ass beat in card games and, like, just be laughing the whole time. Yeah, like, that's such a healthy mindset. Uh, to have uh, a JJ after he lost in top eight uh, with, with Quan Chi immediately afterwards, he was like, Brown, let's go play a game. And we were memeing around. He was playing a talent two deck. Right. And, and, and we were just having fun. Like that's, that's the mindset of that. That's, that's how like, and JJ, you know, UK champion, I'm sure he's going to win, you know, worlds and, and nets at some point too. The dude is incredibly good. Uh, uh, that's the way that, that I would encourage anybody to play too, you know, and that's, that's what, we all should aspire to, to, to be yeah. like is to just roll with it and, and have the, the positive mentality when it comes to cards in general. Um, if my poor roommate can sit here, Skylar Hunter and watch me beat his ass and by the beat his ass, I mean like literally not let him play UFS most of the time. Cause all I play are control decks mm-hmm. and still want to play this game. Like he can't travel for stuff, but he still likes playing. He still loves playing people. He's playing people on fucking discord and shit. If he, if I can turn him off to the experience so much with control decks, uh, and he still wants to stick around, that means the game is incredibly fun. Yeah. It's very good for deck building. It's very creative. Gets creative minds going. You get to play fun stuff. Like sometimes it's super broken, and that's why it's fun. Sometimes it's like really unique, and that's why it's fun. And like it's just that kind of game. Yep. Yep. It's fun and hard. UFS is fun and hard. Yes. Emphasis on hard stiff and super- oh it's stiff yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh boy all right guys that's gonna be it for us i believe episode four brew and bertram bromley we'll try and get to you another fun topic next week um we are in a little bit of a lull state with ufs so we're trying to just think of stuff kind of on the fly which is fine uh we didn't really need to cover my hero academia spoilers because there weren't any it was just pictures and i pictures. don't care enough about pictures and that one bakugo anything. card which is the new shotgun Oh, that Bakugo car is sweet. Bakugo <laughs> sucks, though. He's terrible. Uh, All right, guys. Like, subscribe, share. Oh, yeah, dude. All those fucking YouTube things. Just do those. Do all those things.